Welcome to Rickscale Model Fix and another brand new kit review. This time it's Airfix's newly released 148 scale Canadair Sabre F Mark IV. So without further ado, let's get on with the box top tour. So as always with Airfix, there's some stunning digital box top artwork. And your kit number for this release is A08109. The box is quite big for what is a 48 scale Sabre and there you can see on this side we've got the two marking options included in the kit. The kit's rated a skill level 2 with three airfix flying hours. On the other side we've got the usual multilingual warnings, officially licensed product from Boeing and the decals being printed by Cartograph. End of the box is the box top artwork replicated. So without further ado, let's unbox it and take a look inside. So just lifting the lid, we can see that uh, I've already unboxed this, just to make sure everything was there present and correct. So it does come in that single Airfix bag. Canopy is moulded on open and closed section, and it's in its own little bag for protection. And then we've got the screws, which we shall have a look later. Colour marking diagram and the instruction booklet. Stencil guide and the decal sheet. Taking a look at the decal sheet, there are the two markings and the stencil data. They're expertly printed by Cartograph, what's more to say. Uh, they'll behave perfectly and as good as anything you can buy in the aftermarket. So taking a look at those two markings, we've got two Royal Air Force machines, one dated Germany 1954 3 Squadron with attractive green fin flashes and bars round the roundels on the fuselage side. And the other scheme, scheme B, not quite as attractive, a bit more plain with no fancy paintwork, but nonetheless still quite attractive and that's Germany 1954 again and number 4 squadron and they're in the standard dark green, dark sea grey and PIU blue camouflage scheme. So the last bit of uh, literature before the instruction book is the position of the common stencil data and as you can see with this being a jet there's plenty to keep you going there for a couple of evenings. So taking a look at the instruction booklet and it's in Airfix's standard format. So you've got a little bit of uh, a breakdown on the front there of what the aircraft was all about. Turning the page at the icons for the uh, multilingual callouts in the instruction booklets and then we dive in to the assembly. Intake being assembled and the cockpit tub being secured on top of that. Nothing strange to anybody who's built a Sabre in 48 scale before. I think the Academy and the Hasegawa kit both feature a similar approach. Ejection seat being assembled and added to the cockpit tub and again with Airfix we've got decals for instrumentation and side consoles. Pilot's control column moulded with the, the leather boot at the bottom in two parts and that's added to the cockpit floor to complete the assembly of that area and page 8, set stage 8, sorry. Turning the page and it's the intake and we're seeing that being added to the front of the model. Intake ring cemented in place quite early on. Fod guard, it's interesting to see that being inserted into the end of the intake and then the intake ring being in, added on top of that. That could be quite interesting uh, to see how that actually pans out in the build because you'd want to add that at the end surely. But saying that it would protect what you'd painted down the intake. Pilot figures supplied, nose gear being built up, nose gear bay being built up and added to the underside of the intake. And then we're into some of the options in the kit. So we've got the options to have the arm cannon gun bays open, or the armament bays open or closed. Saying there if you want them closed just to skip the next sections, but uh, we'll take a look at those. So we have 
representations of the, the weaponry and the ammunition feed shoots and some decals going on there as well so that should be look, look quite nice built up. Those are then added to the open aperture in the fuselage, both sides and then we're on to air brakes. Again options for the air brakes open and closed so it'd be interesting to see again how they sort of have differently portrayed compared to the existing Sabre kits. Rear end internals, jet pipe, again another FOD guard being cemented in place before it's added to the fuselage. Calling out for 10 grams of nose weight before the fuselage halves are added together and we've got the base, is that the base of the tail going in there which looks quite strange, I've not seen that before. It's giving you the option of gear up and a one piece nose uh, bay door which is helpful and again it's for the centre uh, main wheel and the centre section of the wing. Undercarriage down, go through the process, quite a nicely looking detailed undercarriage bay there. Looking at the wings, it's then saying that we need to cut the wing tips off if you're building the cannon bays open and then the wings attached to the model. Now it's interesting to see that we've actually got separate leading edges to the wing so we could be looking at a slatted wing release from Airfix at some point in the future. This is a hard wing with the wing fences as portrayed in the kit. If you're using aftermarket decals or for any of the options, just please check that the option that you select um, portrays the correct wing layout. Uh, they did change between and sabers between models. Top of the tail and the sort of dorsal spine area being added. That's different breakdown again. Lower wing section bit having been built up and added in place there to the model with the wing tips and aerolons being this same piece. So again, hints there really strongly at uh, a hard wing or a slatted wing. Tailplane coming together. So a few dropping panels might be better to add those at the beginning of the build where you can fettle the fit if needed without uh, worrying about them dropping inside and not being able to get them back out. Undercarriage doors being added, undercarriage legs are quite straightforward and quite simple. It was not was an early jet, so there's nothing uh, too complex there. Nice to see that you could have the landing or taxi lights in the operational position if need be. And the nose gear being built up and added there to the model. Landing gear continues on stage 75 and page 16. And it's quite a simple setup, and then we're on to those speed brakes. So you've got the bays in the open position. I think most sabers on the ground have the air brakes deployed anyway. Drop tanks, pretty standard, two halves, tail fins added, dropped in place on the model. Two types of drop tanks, so it'll be interesting to see which is which there. Small aerials and pitot tubes onto the cockpit with the landing lights deployed or retracted hood, beacon inside the cockpit, cockpit glass coming on to complete your build. So taking a look at the plastic and there we have a very modular broken down fuselage with the drop in panels cut out so you've got those sections there and that dorsal spine that we saw in the instruction booklet. The sprue is very untidy with lots of flash as you can see but it is only on the runners and the framework it doesn't seem to be on any of the kit parts. There's no short shots on this sprue everything looks good. Um, ejector pins all on the inside so they're going to need um, maybe need some attention making sure that they don't interfere with the fit of the parts when you construct them. Panel detail is fairly standard airfix. Frame B, 
contains the intake parts and undercarriage bays, doors, gun bays, speed brakes, that nose ring and it is covered, just looking at that in a strange blue substance, I'm not sure what that is, if you can see that in the cockpit tub, maybe a mould release, it's on all the parts. Yeah. So you might want to give this a wash before we start build I think, give those parts a bit of a scrub, it's really really prominent on that uh, cockpit tub, I don't know if you can see that, so definitely give these uh, sprues a bit of a, a wash before construction, it is all over that sprue, so with these being early kits I would am assuming it's some sort of mould release, but it is quite prevalent there, it's going to interfere with your paintwork. Spruce C, it's got the two types of ejector seats on there so there's definitely hints of other versions being released of the kit. Quite a nice pilot figure, those fodguard plugs for the uh, rear and nose. Various main setup of main wheels, again hinting at definitely later marks. Machine guns there for the, the bays, uh, etc. And the last plastic sprue in the kit are the wings and these are definitely broken down to provide airfix with the option of doing various wing configurations so let's hope everything fits there as it needs to otherwise you're going to have some unsightly seams along the leading edge the wing tips are moulded with the ailerons as well um, might be better to sever those glue the wing tips on and then you can pose your ailerons deflected if you wanted to, there's those drop-in panels. Rudimentary detail on the instrument panel which is supplemented with a decal. So I've just unbagged the cockpit again, crystal clear, no mould flaws. Got some lamps and lenses there, all very good there for an airfix. So there we have a quick look in the box of Airfix's brand new 148 scale Canada Sabre F4. It's an average kit I think in my opinion. Maybe slightly better than the Hasegawa one but I think the Academy one might be an easier build. I've built both of those in the past than to really run into any problems with either kit. So it'll be interesting to get this on the workbench and of course hopefully I'll bring it to you as a video build. So until then, please, everybody, look after yourselves, take care, and stay well.